Okay, I messed up a little bit. I pressed the wrong button and let's restart over. So this video is about um, rebar chairs. Are they a scam? And the comments are pretty pretty interesting. Uh, let's let's clear this up. The so he says on the concrete rebar, do it yourself, excavation, blue collar, satire. That might be with the uh, sandals and the uh, and the um, uh, chairs he used, the literal chairs he uses. 1.8 million views. And hold on. So the guy that calls himself uh, Brother Catelli, you can see he does, you know, he has some concrete work to a degree, but not, not much. It's just, you know, he may say it's satire, but it looks like uh, that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not his wheelhouse concrete. So he's saying satire, but he says he's being scammed. Let's see. And I think it, I don't think it's really satire. I think he really means it. Especially when I show you the damn rebar, play, the placement. Your concrete contractors using rebar chairs, they might be ripping you. We recently had a customer ask us to put a bunch. So that's a, a, that's a tire, guys. A, you, a wire ties, you loop around there, and this is just pulls up and down, twist, it, twist the ties. All right, now we have, I don't know what that looks like, uh, sand. All right, sandal guy, left hand gloves, filming. Let's go from there. And, and oh my God, they're so expensive. It took us like. And he's using quarter inch, maybe a quarter inch rebar. So it's, it's not large at all. So um, the uh, this is a cutter and the bender parts over there. Um, makes me think he's not a real contractor because you put these on boards. Because it's a pain in the ass when it's just like that. A lot of contractors will put them on a longer board so they can get more leverage and it doesn't flip around and flip over. Put it on a 2x6, two 2x8. Two These are the stakes he's using and then you cut them off. Um, again, let's go from here. Three and a half hours to put them all in and half of them were broken. Half of them were broken. He's using real toy chairs. All right, so here he should be having expansion joint against this butting into what appears it presents as like a garage or I don't care it's another surface that's already been installed so it's you get the expansion joint there there's a little bit of a ledge there see the ledge and that little box there so it's a little bit of this going on all right the ones we got were like nine bucks for 12 of them and we needed around 500 and then he's just driving them in and in, inside there you see you needed 500 huh that's four hundred dollars that we have to pass on to the customer. We run a business to make money, so we're gonna have to mark that up. Plus, we have to charge for the additional labor. So after a twenty percent, I do like his chairs. They're cute as hell. Look, he went to a little uh, wherever he went to to get these. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Markup and our labor. The customer is gonna be charged an extra eight hundred bucks for these rinky dink little things. In reality, we could just pick this rebar up as we're going. So, what do you guys think? So a lot of contractors. Pick up the rebar. That is true. It is terrible. All right, let me cut to the chase here in a minute. All right, well, I'll do it now. All right, so here's your rebar placement. Here's your pad. All right, and that's your elevation. The elevation is determined by the, the chairs. All right, you, this is it. You use less chairs, and this will sag down when you walk on it. So you need more chairs so you can so you can walk on it without um, with, with with support. So it does take a hell of a lot of chairs or a larger rebar. Now here it is here. Now I'm going to give and I take. I'll do. The, I'll read my comments that I posted for this channel, and then I'll explain more. But here's your supports here. Let's go now. A rebar chair is a scam. I feel like I got took. All right. Well, he's taking the customer now because that spacing of that rebar, one here. And one here and one here. What is the purpose? What is the purpose? This is absolutely a waste. Of fucking ridiculous. All right, it's 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 fucking ridiculous. He's got his ten up. He might be his own customer, as far as I know, but that is just ridiculous. All right, you saw it. You saw where he had the placement of it. Well, looks like he's just for his video. There's just three chairs, and he looks like he said no fucking. He's not putting more chairs in there, although he said it. What do you spend four or five hundred bucks? He's gonna pass on to the customer. 
So this is what some uh, uh, this is what he this is what he pinned. He pinned this. A good competent concrete man would not need rebar chairs if it pays if he pays attention and knows what he's doing. We bought chairs. We bought chairs are for union idiots. So this is 1980s talking to you right here. This guy right here, the pen. This is ridiculous. It's stupid as fuck. All right. So what is bleed water? Bleed water is the result of the excess water you have in your concrete mix. That you have the sand, you have the aggregates, the stones. Could be pea stones, three quarter, whatever it might be, minus. Uh, and then your cement. Let's just use that. We'll leave out the fly ash and anything else like that. Well, these materials, they don't float. All right? They, they, they don't float. And so we have water mixed in there. And so what happens? These materials, they settle down in the bottom of your form. And when they do that, they, dis they displace the water that was in there, right? The water content. They, was, they was displace the water content to the top of the surface. That's your bleed water. That's your bleed water. Now, let's back that up. Now, you have rebar in here without chairs that assholes like this tell you that you can just lift it up. Well, if, if uh, bleed water is created by, or you get the bleed water on top by the displacement of water from the sand, gravel, and um, the, the cement, then, and this is steel, will it not also sink also? It sinks also. It weighs, it, it displaces down to some degree, a lot of times to the bottom. When I've been part of demolitioning, we find the steel flat on the bottom. All right, what are the odds that, that uh, without chairs, that you keep finding the steel on the bottom? Did the contractor from the 1980s do the lifting up? Yeah, more than likely, yes. They didn't just leave it on the ground. And then they walk on it. They lift it up, then they walk on it here, and then it just goes back down. It's like that. If they pull it up, and then they walk on it here, and it just pushes it back down. And they walk every few feet, every few inches, you know, as they're walking backwards, and it pushes the rebar back down. Then they pull it up, and then they walk back. They cover it with concrete, and then they walk back a few inches, stepping on the rebar, and it goes back down again. And so if you're looking at demolition, you'll often find the rebar at the bottom on the, on the ground. I'm going to give and take in this about, about how well that really works out. So you need the chairs to keep the steel in its proper proper location. And I want you to think, I'm going to cut to the chase a bit, as the concrete pad as a beam. A beam, do you put the, con do you put the steel at the bottom of a beam? On the, on the ground, at the bottom of the beam? Well, well actually, you, you kind of do. I'm going to give and take on that. You kind of do. Because ACI talks about, ACI American Concrete Institute for you guys, is that you need so much cover for concrete, you know, inch and a half, etc. And so down here, it's, you get the inch and a half, the cover. Well, if it's just cover, well, then it doesn't fucking matter about the concrete. Uh, if it's just cover to protect the steel, then the steel should be on the ground. Huh. If it's just cover, if it's not placed in a point... If, if it's just cover for protection of the steel, well, then, yeah, on the ground is better. You're raising it, you're raising it for cover protection to protect it from uh, the elements swelling up and fracturing a concrete. So I have a video on this, and uh, I can link you and show you the proof of that where the rebar is on the bottom, the reinforcement's on the bottom, and it works beautifully on the bottom, totally fucking exposed, I show it and I load it. I load the I load the uh, concrete sample I have up. It's forty plus years old. I load it up with a piece of equipment, and we see it holds. I do another one where I show you you can do repairs from the outside, and 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 mount up, mount it, and it works beautifully. So the chairs are are more for cover, but then it reduces. The problem is it also reduces your where you're locating your your rebar. If you only have four inches of concrete here, and you're using two-inch chairs, all right, you're putting the rebar in the center. So now, effectively, your reinforcement area is now here, is here, this, this two inches. This is pretty much cover, 
and you're not getting much value out of that cover short of the uh, protecting the steel so I'd like to see it further at the further down further down now this is a four inch pad six inch I'm it's another another story but I'm gonna give you something better than that wait for it so I guess I'm there already um, rebar chairs are just for crushed cans um, before we get to me let's find this other engineer you're lucky you didn't require the rebar recliners um, you make it fun okay this guy says uh, right here as an engineer um, I can say rebar chairs are not a scam but if you're a concrete contractor you should know this okay so let's go to the replies to him thank you just by you saying you are an engineer your opinion is null and void well that person's a little triggered curious why do you think uh, design tools and technique and um, techniques con techniques contractors use at all spoiler it's an engineer it's very very wide net wide net I appreciate your sentiment sentiment but this isn't this isn't like saying I'm a doctor or something it's very likely to be pretty relevant to be an engineer of some sort swinging and missing it on this kind of thing just makes you look like an ass as you got to be careful I thought he's gonna ignore him nope he comes back with uh, this here the, the, the engineer poster I could give a crap less I could give a crap less for your opinion on engineers but before you attack them you should educate yourself there are reasons we do things the way we do did you know 99.5 percent of every building bridge tunnel failure is due to a contract of errors and shortcuts your opinion is irrelevant to me however if hypothetically you are you are on my project it will be done my way the right way or you can get kicked or you can kick rocks and find another project i'm not having a project fail because a contractor is illiterate and takes shortcuts that's how innocent people get injured and sometimes unfortunately die of course they're not a scam only a contractor cutting corners uh wouldn't price them in as a, as a default that's what that person says they kind of are you could accomplish the same thing with junk like uh like like junk lying around or just like a rock and put it under the rebar okay it's not this is this is false all right rock i've seen it many times are solid i know they got the adobe blocks they're they're making a void in your concrete the chair being made of metal is going to allow rebar to the concrete to get around it these are creating voids all your rocks all your adobe blocks they're uh they're shit. don't don't use them you're creating voids in your concrete every fucking where adobe blocks are a piece of shit. all right uh the problem works uh the pro you probably work for the company that designed rebar chairs they're making fun of them laugh out loud right he said rebar chair is a scam he proceeded to say he can just pick it pick it up as he goes shoddy contractor for sure rebar will end up uh, settling with vibration well that's assuming the guy's vibrating if he's vibrating yeah it's gone down for sure now nah, the majority of those are the inspector's fault they just set aside their trucks running AC for an hour and go and put pieces of paper on board and then leave they, they never check shit as an outside person that works with engineers yep still the dumbest people I know don't even know it's a joke okay it, it's not a joke okay he wrote satire here but it's not a joke all right this is his placement of his rebar with or without the chairs he's not a chair person as you can see he low down a case but we count one two and three and we don't see him over here as, con as a continuation of his joke he is not using chairs this guy is just pulling it up as he stated I think you're having the rebar suspended above the ground is a scam uh, then you're not a good contract if you think having the rebar suspended above the ground is a scam then you're not a good contractor well not not really I'm going to explain this to you from from the, uh, okay let me just explain to you now let me look at my comment all right so this one I I since I know I'm gonna be dealing with some trolls I hit them hard I hit them right with the uh, right with hit them oh what the hell's my comment right there I hit them hard as an engineer engineer and expert on material behavior 
Rebar elevation is not a scam. No, you can't just pull rebar up like it's like it's 1980. Okay, with the haters. Okay, with the haters. Uh, I, get, I think I said for the haters, but you know, auto check decided uh, four is no longer needed. I have a work. I have a workaround for you. First, it's all about the expected load condition. The expect load condition. Yeah, you know what? You suck, uh, my auto chat. The expected load condition. All right. The expected load condition. Is this a car? Or is it people? In this case, it's a walkway. If you're, if you're, if your walkway, he, what the fuck? It didn't correct there. If your walkway is walkway or driveway will see light traffic and even it's heavy traffic number one is base compaction so number one is base compaction base compaction if it's compacted so great that you re that you drive on it and it doesn't leave an imprint then you can just put the concrete right on top of it now you're good to go rebar is is, is just weakening your concrete in fact because it's putting voids in it also okay let me give you more Number two is water erosion in the sub base over time, creating the. I'm gonna to have to edit this video, or this comment, creating those uh, voids under your concrete. All right, so you can't have water. And I don't know if that's an AC unit. You can't have water coming under E here. It'll create a void. So here's a concrete, and the water coming under there will saturate, especially if it's clay type soil, and you'll get voids. And now you'll get, if this was a tire here, if this is a driveway, there's a tire loading on this concrete that's not supported it's not supported i'm gonna get back to that in a minute creating those huge voids so compaction is because so compaction in small lifts is so compact in small lifts don't use the big ones control water be mindful of clay sub base and if you come to my channel i will reveal what all engineers error in design for example what i'm just talking about in placement of driveway rebar Except, of course, except me, of course. I will educate you on placement. Mm -mm. Educate you placement. And also the why. Okay, uh, the odd slap. The Okay, the odd slap in the face. Rebar that is even laid on the ground has huge value over no rebar. And I show this in real world sample testing. Let me edit this real quick. Let me put you on pause and edit this. Okay, I did some editing there. You may free screen, you know... Pause and take a look. I fix a lot of grammar, including uh, well, whatever. All right, let's jump into the uh, the driveway issue now. I said I would show why engineers make this mistake, exception of myself. Here's the rebar placed. All right, two directions, uh, twelve inch on center. Let's say it two directions, so it's you know it's two directions, twelve inch on center, bottom. One third, everybody like to say, but let's say they put they they put six inches of concrete here. All right, six inches, and the um, bottom third would be the uh, two inch mark. Okay, so two inch chairs. Okay, let's get the chairs on there, and then they're like, there you go. Well, effectively, you now have uh, re this since this is cover. All right, you get very little value below it. You actually do, but you, it's you do to some degree. It still has some. You get the bond strength all the way around. So here's the rebar with the concrete on top of it, on the ground. All right, so this is the profile view of it. There's the rebar on the ground. As you can see there's no concrete cover there. So it's in surface with the dirt, the soil here. Okay, and so it can rot and expand. Mostly it doesn't. I've seen so much of this rebar on the ground, and I really inspect it, and, and, and I load test it, and I'm like, this fucking shit is just awesome, even on the ground. So, um, and wire mesh especially. Six, six inch wire mesh, six inch, six by six wire mesh. That's what I recommend for you guys. You don't have to worry about this, doing this mistake. Um, and it, it's really high... You know, 60K stuff. It's uh, 40, 40 or 60K um, specs. Now, the chairs here, again, you need so many chairs that you don't create a profile like uh, post-tensioning. 
So if you if you have a void here from this center line to here, and and you were putting concrete down, and then you got back to here and you stepped on it, and you bent it, it would bend. It would be like that. Now it's going to come up short here because you have a bend. So when you have it like this in the back image and you step on it, it you bent it. All right, rebar can bend, especially with these two chairs. You know, so now how? What are you going to do? Lift up here. If you lift this up. What are you going to do? You're going to raise this up. So this will no longer be there. This will now be here. All right. And you lift this up to where the, where you think it is. And now the profile looks like this. It's no longer at two inches, two inches above. Now it's at three. So you, you're defeating, you're, you're working against yourself. Now the best chairs that I like are the, uh, they look like they're, they're long. I have an image for you. They're, they're like this. All right. They're like this. That is the chair. It's all this is the reinforcement. They look like little mini truss systems. You lay them down. You lay them down every 12 inches if you want. Now the rebar, the concrete will go between them and, and really lock it in. Okay, let's go to the uh, driveway. So here's your driveway. All right, here's your vehicle. I'm going to put your vehicle, your tires here. Okay, and there's the top of the vehicle. All right, and it's, I'm sorry, we're, we're looking down the driveway. We're looking, this this is going away from us. That's the top of the car. All right, it's the top of the car. This is the back of the car. Oh, license plate. So here's your license plate, okay? Here's your load, your tire loading. Let's just do this, okay? Here's your tire loading. All right, so the, re, the, the soil below here, you compact it so greatly that you don't have to that you don't have to put any rebar in it. That you're just like driving on pavers at this point, a concrete paver, one sheet of concrete paver. The load transfers directly into the soil, and this car being three thousand pounds, let's just say that it doesn't have a way to. It's not going to crack your concrete. All right, it's not cracking your concrete, and. The load is distributing that plate, that plate, steel plate, in this case it's a concrete plate, is distributing it into the soil without any, without any heave, without any give. All right, your con you have no cracks in your concrete, so that's equal distri is distribution. But you have an air conditioner like in this in the background, and now it's over here. It leaks down, it creates that void. It creates that void there, right? It comes in there and starts... Uh, moistening the soil and then uh, saturating the soil and drying out and then it shrinks back. Now you got a void here. Well, your tires are over here, so you're, you're pretty much you're pretty much good. It's not there yet, but now let's move. Let's do, redo this again. Now let's move the car. So let's put the car back in there with the license plate. And so license plate tires. Right there, and it's it's a van. All right, so there's your license plate. It's looking down it. Now the you have voids here. Now this is when rebar can help. Now you got some voids from that water, whatever it is, constriction, shrinking, contraction, and yet it's 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 connected. So it's it's hold the slabs here. It's here. It's still here. If you could see, it, it's still supported in multiple places. Your load now is this concrete. How much can this concrete take before it fractures without rebar? So what can this this PSI concrete and this design mix, what can they take under loading without fracturing? Well, you don't get fractures. It's nice, fresh concrete. It's still got some ductility to it, if you will. It's still got some bond strength with all that, uh, the amount of paste you have and the stone aggregate, and you just got gr great great bond sort of like breaking a brick right you push on a brick nothing you take a, a hammer to it smash fractures it easily well this tire has a much bigger distribution of loading the front being the front of the vehicle looking to top view the engine say it's up front it will put more load stress when you go to apply brakes as opposed to the rear of the vehicle so this is critical also for where you're going to stop 
Now you approach your looking in top view now. We're going to do a garage. So this is your garage. That's the apron right here going into the garage. And then you have your pad. Now let's do your pad. So there's your concrete pad. Let's make it a two car garage. All right. Two car garage. So let's just divide it like that. But I'm, I want you to see that the car's path would be, you know, wouldn't be towards this post. It's a post, let's call it. The post is here. So you're going to go into your garage, left or right. So this is garage one, this is garage two. As you approach your car, you just you come off the street. Uh, let's do this one. At 25 miles an hour, you drop down 8 miles an hour. You, you enter your first apron. As we know, aprons are pretty, or we all understand aprons should be thick there. Right, for most municipalities, you require a larger apron. Um, then you cross your sidewalk. All right, now you've reduced your sidewalk. A lot of people are down to four inches. You get away with it frequently with this four inch sidewalk. Yeah, that's terrible in color, isn't it? With this four inch sidewalk, you get away. You get away with it. All right, let's put some lines in the sidewalk for expansion as part of municipalities code requirements that's the apron now you're in your driveway section your driveway after you do that now you you may hit a little more gas maybe you got a little uphill you got to go or whatever to get inside your your location so let's put tires here okay because you're going to wind up inside your garage you approach your, your this apron all right there's an apron so you hit the brakes Hitting the brakes, you put right here is where you hit your brakes before you hit that bump, that apron. So there you, you're hitting here, the front tires, so that's the engine, remember? So that's going to be a, sur a surge right there on your concrete, right before the apron. And then you cross over onto the apron, and it's like a one-inch one inch elevation change. You come into your garage, and once again, you drive forward slowly, but nevertheless, you still have a higher surge at, when you park your car. You know, a surge forward, then your rear, then your rear of your car. Now let's think of it's the same on the left side also. Now it's the bigger the car, the more the more issues you have. Now I want you to look at those tires there. Let's see if I can change colors. That mm, that's black. Um, blue I've already used. Maybe I'll recycle green. So I want you to look at your rebar. I'm going to take it. We'll get rid of the rebar. But your rebar, you, you're, some of you clowns are pacing it, you know, two feet apart. Okay. What? And then that's it. Maybe this direction, two feet. All right. So what, what the hell is that? You can see where, well, it works here. If a tire hits right there, it helps out. But all this is nothing. It's just tributary area. It's nothing tying it in. You might you might put a piece of down here. This is all bottom steel. You guys aren't putting two layers of steel on this. You're like, no, it's, you only need one on driveways. Well, that's why most engineers do it. They give you you know spec the one layer. Now I want you to keep track of the vehicle here. Now I'm going to do another um, profile for you. This time we're going to over here. We're going to now put the vehicle here. Let me do the let me do the same color. Um, license plate, tire, and mushroom head car. Okay, so uh, this is the license plate right here, right? So you know where you're looking now. Steel goes at the bottom. Okay, that's where everybody's putting it at. There's your steel, there are your chairs. You're at the edge of the concrete at this point. Let me change the white. You're at the edge. See right here is the edge of this concrete. You're loading it with this tire here. All right. And it's at the it's at the bottom there. This concrete wants to fracture right here. It's because the concrete is being loaded in cantilever. You need another set of steel here. All right. Now you even say Hook it. Let me clean that up. I would even say hook your steel like that and stirrup it. So, you know, stir. I'm going to show the stirrups like this. Stirrup it around that, that zone there. 
Now this one in, over here to the left, this is the current the steel going all the way over. Um, you're in fair game. This this side here is support. You can keep it to bottom steel over here. This can be bottom steel. That works. That you don't need up top there. All right. You don't need up top because the steel is being loaded. Deflection of the concrete. Think of it as a beam is being loaded at the bottom at that point. So here's a load here. But this load is on the like this. It's on the edge. And so it wants to fracture off, rotate to the right, and you get that fracture right there. How do you uh, deal with that? Again, put some top steel there. All right, and, and give me a little hook. All right, give me a little hook, and then tie these two together. Just, you know, inbound. So here's your tire to the left. So let's use this as a tire, right? So come in, you know, midline, or the engine midline. And that's where you're going to come over and hook your steel. So that steel would be here. I'm going to back that out. All right. So you're going to hook hook it, stir up it. And now you have some great reinforcement for that cantilever failure where you see cracks on the edges of driveways. You'll do the same on this side here because that's where the car is going to be going to have your issues. That's why when you come into garages a lot, you'll see cracks by the walls over here but none but maybe none here um and you'll see cracks over here um in some garages now it depends on the loading of the vehicle you know and how they come in do they come in like a monster or do they come in nice and smooth and easy easy loading the concrete says no problem but some people might come in hot and heavy boom, hitting the brakes all right and then the fracture starts here from this end where the engine is works its way back um, and again, the same thing with the aprons. If you see fractures here with your apron areas, that's where they're hitting the brakes. And you'll see them often on the uh, on this side first, and then they'll develop on this side, on the in in intersection. This would be your first side, the outer edge. All right, so now you see the what how to handle that cantilever. All right, so... It's the end there for development length, you could turn this ninety. You could turn this up to be part of it. Turn it up to lock in with that, and then you're going to stir up this. Stir up it, yeah. So you're going to stir up it all the way down the driveway, midway engine, top steel, only only this side and top steel here, including bottom. But top steel is you're only adding over here. You don't need to add it in the middle. The middle is depending, but your steel's got to be close, you know, and we're talking six by six. And what's the beauty of my uh, technique is wire mesh. All right, six, let me clean this up. Six by six wire mesh. All right, for, don't, 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 don't go crazy, guys, with all that work I'm trying to tell you to do unless you're building a bridge. Six by six wire mesh. Just buy the six by six. It's already welded together. You don't have to worry about that wire tying. You lay it down there. You do have to tie the. I would like to see to tie you the, the uh, top steel, that mesh. So you would lay a grid down at the top. At where the cars are, you lay one of the sheets down. All right, it's six by six, and then you have a sheet on the above it, in the upper part of the uh, concrete. And I would like to see you tie the two together with uh with the chair now. So you can use the chair as your stirrup. So here's your mesh up top. There's your mesh down here. Here's your stirrup. Tying it together, though, you need to be able to hook it. Um, hook it, hook it over. Hook it. So I like to see you do this with a chair that's open. So it would be you would feed it inside. Remember the lattice one I told you? You're going to slide it inside right there on the end. But you will have to make some some links all right you will have to make some links if you and and if you really don't want to do the links at least do them here at the at the front of the garage before you enter and where the car turns and comes in right there where you have it now if you can compact this soil if you can compact that soil at the edge so there's a the driveway again if you can get that soil compaction way out here 
all right? So tight. And how do you know it's tight? If you guys got a 6x6 six six truck, you know, six-wheeler, you load it up with some, uh, load it up with your rocks, and you drive this soil, all right? You drive, after you tamp it, you drive it. If you're making ruts, and you're making ruts, then your, your soil's not compacted enough, all right? But use the truck. Now, it, it's a real thing using a truck, a triaxle, for example. If uh, some of the state um, highway departments doing inspection, they don't go around just testing it with probes. They'll they'll have the trucks line up some six by some uh, triaxles loaded up, you know, with their 60, 80,000 pounds of weight on it, and then they'll have them drive the, drive the road and they'll look for the ruts. All right, if you got the ruts, not compacted enough. It's just easy as that. You can actually you can evaluate pretty damn badass using a triaxle loaded up, all right, and backing up, etc. And the, the bonus of it is it's doing compaction for you. You know, so if you fail, you're, you're going to add more materials and you're going to drive it until your compaction is minimal. I mean, it's, that it's way down there. So use your, your, your loaded vehicle and slamming on brakes if you must to, to see how much you can, if, it's impre if, it, if the soil impresses. So, do the, uh, if you got the clay, you know, try to stiffen it by adding, by breaking up the amount of clay, by adding more rocks between it. So, you're almost like you're, it's, all, it's not almost, you're, you're, it's like you're breaking away all the clay, and then you can, you're putting back the clay with a mixture of rocks. So, now it can't expand as much, uh, because there's a lot of clay in there, a lot of rocks in there that limit, it's going to expand. But it can't do any damage because now it's like, ah, it's not fully a sheet of clay. It's now in a rock with these rocks. Now, it's, it's got to be pretty damn deep because you got to remember that water wants to keep penetrating. So ultimately, this technique of the rock clay thing I'm telling you, it has to ultimately seal off itself with expansion because clay um, cation effect, cation it expands. It can take on more water. And here's the rocks and then clay, rocks and clay. Ultimately, you want it to create a locking sheet so when water tries to get down here, it's too late. All this clay sealed it off. And even though there's more clay down here, well, it can't get saturated because this clay is already maxed out the amount of clay uh, water it can take. And it seals it off. Earthen dam, clay. Um... It seals it off, so this clay, even though it could expand if water got to it, it can't expand because the, this mixture design up here won't penetrate down here. It's it's not an easy sell to do that for you guys. Um, I know, because most people are like, it's just clay, I'll just add a rebar, and no, that's it. Yeah, that's that's uh, your option. All right, take care. I um, hope this was, that you follow along. Um, compaction, compaction, and compaction, and testing with your um, 6x6 vehicle or a triaxle would be awesome. No, you cannot use a bobcat with tracks, all right? They displace the load so much that it's, that it's, it's you, can, you could let it run over your foot, and, you know, if it wasn't for the nodules and the damn tracks, you'd be okay um, in most, most instances. So, no, uh, tire... Tires work out better, um, and remember, because you're only going to have this much surface area in contact with the soil, considering it does impress somewhat. Impress, when I say impress, you know, depressing it leaves an impression. All right, love you guys. Hope this was helpful, and see you in the funny pages. Okay. And anybody knows me, there's my boy Georgie right with me. Right next to me, he just hangs out with me. Right, Georgie? He knows it's me, so I can just pet him, uh, pet him like that. And that's my boy. That's my boy, George. He's like my dog. Wherever I go, he goes, and we just hang out. So if, you, if you're going to get down with the, uh, with the uh, chairs, this is the type of chairs I can recommend. You can cut them. You know, and leave two section of twos, and it will be actually support for you. You can buy the longer length. It, it 
they're nice. They come out better. You know, you clip, 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 pull cutters. Um, that's it. Of course, we have the 6x6 mesh I already talked to you about. Um, there's another version of chairs right here. This has your spacing uh, 3 inches by 6 inch rebar. I mean, 6 inches. So this would be a 6 inch spacing. 3 inches elevation. That puts it... That's huge concrete. You know, you don't want it. You don't want it in neutral. You don't want it in the neutral axis. You don't want it in the middle of your concrete. That just reduces your effectiveness of the rebar, the reinforcement. Um, so no, 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 no to putting it in the middle of your concrete. Also, did I say no? No. I think this would be the last tip because it's the video. Okay, so here's a, here's a chair here, as you can see. Uh, I thought it had one in the background. All right, that's one also. They use this one in CTS, Champlain Tower. So why all the wire ties? People tell you, oh, you can miss this and you can miss that. You can skip it. I've seen people talk about skipping, skipping and all that. Well, if you don't skip it and you tie these together, when you walk on it, it will, tra it will be locked in. It will become a little stiff bridge over to your next chair. So... If you can walk on it and they, you walk on this one and you only have it, let's clear that up a little bit. If you if you only have it tied here and here and you walk on it, this will deflect. But if you tie it again in the middle here, now all of a sudden you've got a nice rigid spot where you're, where you're walking on it. And don't have your people all backed up, to, you know, every, everywhere. Um, so this is to give you elevation. All right. And then the wire will help keep it maintained there as you're serve, as you're walking on it keeping it together also because you don't want the the this the, the cross mesh this is if you're doing bridge work for example that this this one is half an inch or three inches lower than this one you're creating a post tension profile if you will and it's 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 wrong all right you got rebar up you got rebar down now you want it to be as a mat and so Tying these together with the, they look like they did a good job there. At, at all the locations is the way to go. Take care. Love you guys. Hopefully it was helpful. Bye.